It was a special kind of paradise, little known by the outside world. Hundreds of tiny islands, blue lagoons, lush forests. The haunting voices of ancient villages. Villages filled with the smiling faces of innocent children. And then the invaders arrive. The summer of 1942 brings World War II to the remote Solomon Islands. The Solomon Islanders were bewildered by this war. It's referred to as the Big Death. That's the way it's translated. By September, the whole world knew the name Guadalcanal. The disaster of Pearl Harbor leads to one setback after another for America and her allies. Weeks after Pearl, Hong Kong falls, January 3rd. Manila is overrun. In February, Singapore is captured. In 1942, the Japanese sweep down the Pacific Rim, taking country after country. It's about the projection of power across vast distances. By April, Japan is building a mega base on Rabaul in New Guinea surging south into the Solomon Islands within striking distance of Australia and New Zealand. The Japanese army captures Guadalcanal in early July, and there to meet them, just a handful of Australians left behind. Not showing you were scared stiff to the Solomon Islanders. Martin Clemens is one of three coast watchers on Guadalcanal. He is given a radio and an impossible order. Keep an eye on things. Coast Watches is a name that the Second World War generation were, were familiar with, and they knew what it meant. It meant lonely men on, on tropical islands under great threat of capture and torture and execution. The Royal Australian Navy set up the Coast Watcher organisation and called for volunteers to stay behind, people that knew the territory, the terrain, operating radios behind enemy lines. Clemens works with a band of islanders to spy on the Japanese. He and his scouts make a chilling discovery. The Japanese are building an airstrip on the island. Down from where I was, you see. See the whole thing. He flashes word of the airstrip. This is Clemens, this is Clemens. The airfield on Guadalcanal represents a dramatic increase in Japanese power. From Australia to Washington, the news leaves war planners scrambling. Those airplanes are going to protect Japanese warships and submarines. That force is going to immediately begin to cut America off from her key allies. Guadalcanal, then, this obscure island, becomes the line drawn in the sand. We have to stop them here. With few resources, the Marines get the assignment. Only men available to do the job was the 1st Marine Division in New Zealand. Some 10,000 Marines hit Red Beach. That was the original landing. That was where they landed, 9 in the morning, 7th of August, 1942. When we came in, we had no idea of where we were going uh, and uh, what it was all about. Lou Imfeld was in the first wave. When we landed on Guadalcanal, it was pretty much unopposed. The, the Marines wanted to land at the point, just this side of the point, so that if there's enemy the other side of the point, he can't shoot at you. The enemy over there can't reach you. But the Admiral said he was a bit nervous about there being mines there. They got here that first night, the other side of this river, and then gradually made their way to the airfield and took over the airfield for the afternoon of the next day. The Marines found mostly construction crews and quickly captured the unfinished airstrip, naming it Henderson Field for a flyer lost at Midway. 